hello friends welcome to our youtube channel today in this video we will see about high strength structural steel high strength structural steel okay so the highest in the structural steel have often tensile strength in excess of around 600 mpa those with strength up to the 1000 mpa are called high strength steels okay so those with the strength greater than 1000 mpa are called ultra high strength steel okay so high strength low alloy steel first we will see hs la high strength low alloy so these steels contain carbon in the range of as a mild steel that is uh, 0 0.15 to 0 0.25 percent okay but in addition it have a small quantities of alloying elements so the micro alloyed steels discussed earlier are the, called the HSLA steels so in many HSLA steel the alloying elements serve the purpose of increasing the hardenability basically increasing the hardenability to some extent so the, so the microstructure contains so the microstructure contains ferrite plus bainite okay or ferrite plus tempered martin site okay so the typical mechanical properties of a high strength low alloy steels are that is yield strength in mpa so that is 400 to 700 tensile strength that is in mpa that is 500 to 800 and percentage of elongation that is around 18 to 25 okay so these steels have satisfactory weldability so the carbon content of martensite as the carbon content of martensite is low okay now we will see this ni cr mo low alloy steel okay Among the common alloying elements, nickel is the only one which increases the toughness of ferrite. Nickel is responsible for toughness of ferrite. Chromium, in addition, the increases the hardenability. Okay, increases the strength, weldability. Sorry, this wear resistance wear resistance but at the expense of toughness because nickel is once for the toughness of ferrite for structural alloys the nickel by cr ratio should be about 2.5 to counter the temple brittleness inherent in nickel chromium steel about 0.25 percent moly is added okay so one of the well-known alloy structural steels in the nicr mo uh, corresponding to nicr mo corresponds to ai si 4340 okay standard so 0.4 percent of carbon steel when quenched and tempered at 450 degree centigrade has the following properties like by s 650 that is in mpa ts tensile strength that is also in mpa 800 percentage elongation 15 and the toughness value that is izod impact okay in joules that is 30 so these are the typical properties of a 0.4 percent carbon steel okay a 4340 steel when quenched and tempered for the same elongation that is this one 15 percent elongation so and uh, having the impact value also same so the values of bias and ts changes how this bias goes to from 650 to 1200 
MPA okay and this TS value goes to 1350 MPA it is clear that for the same ductility and toughness the low alloy steel possess superior strength low alloy steel is having the superior strength okay conversely for the same strength the low alloy steel would have larger ductility we can also say okay ductility and toughness both ductility and toughness the severity arises from the presence of nickel nickel shows the important role in this superiority of the low alloy steel so among the alloy steels else also from the increased hardenability which enables slower quenching rates with less residual stresses in the steel so where this chromium is responsible for the hardenability okay so the ideal critical diameter for the 4340 steel is 65 i'm talking about 4340 so the ideal critical diameter for the 4340 steel is 655 millimeter as compared to 15 millimeter for a grade of 1040 steel okay so the high hardenability however makes welding difficult in the case of 4340 steel this uh, high hardenability means high hardenability means weldability will be lower okay okay so now in this high strength structural steels we will see the os formed steel was formed steel so these are the thermomechanical treatment which refers to a combination of thermal treatment plus mechanical deformation okay of steels so the control uh, this controlling of uh, micro alloy steels uh, i discussed already in this section so now so in os forming the steel after austenization is cooled to a temperature that lies in the bainite bay okay so on this after austenization the steel is cooled to the temperature interval between the bainitic nose okay interval between bainitic nose and ms temperature so this is the key point in the os forming process and plastically deformed so this is the thermal treatment and this is the mechanical deformation okay now it is then quickly oil quenched to the room temperature before any non martensitic product form after this treatment we will do the oil quenching to avoid non martensite products okay so the martensite units that form in the deformed austenite are smaller and finely dispersed because do we are doing the quenching so this will be very fine martensite okay so the dislocation surface structure of the deformed austenite is inherited by martensite and the properties are like 2300 mpa ts is 2700 mpa and percentage elongation decrease due to the formation of martensite of fine size that is 8% only okay so this is remarkable combination of strength and ductility even though the ductility has reduced little bit but the yield strength and tensile strength increased to a very good value so this is the remarkable combination of strength plus ductility okay so plain carbon steel tempered to the same hardness level will be brittle with poor tensile strength so this is hss in comparison to plain carbon 
प्लेन कार्बन विल नॉट गिव गुड प्रॉपर्टी दैट विल बी द ब्रिटिल ओके विद द पोर टेंसाइल स्ट्रेंथ ऑल्सो विद पुअर टेंसाइल स्ट्रेंथ ओके सो वी कैन ऑल्सो गो विथ सम अदर एग्जाम्पल्स लाइक मैरेजिंग स्टील ओके सो द अंडर ग्रुप ऑफ अल्ट्रा हाई स्ट्रेंथ स्टील आर द मैरेजिंग सो मैरेजिंग इज मीन्स मार्टेंसाइट प्लस एजिंग ओके सो टेबल कंपोजिशन इज ऑफ जीरो पॉइंट जीरो थ्री परसेंटेज ऑफ कार्बन एटीन परसेंट निकिल थ्री टू एट परसेंट दिस सी ओ एंड एम ओ ईच ओके सो फ्रैक्शन ऑफ टी आई एंड एल आर ऑल्सो देयर स्मॉल फ्रैक्शन ऑफ बोथ एलिमेंट ओके सो द स्टील ट्रांसफॉर्म ऑन कूलिंग टू मार्टन साइड विच इज सॉफ्ट ड्यू टू द लो कार्बन कंटेंट सो स्टील इज सॉफ्ट ड्यू टू लो कार्बन कंटेंट ओके सो द स्टील इज देन कोल्ड वर्क एज डिजायर्ड एंड एज अराउंड at 500 degrees centigrade temperature during aging strain induced precipitation of intermetallic compound strain induced precipitation of intermetallic compound such as एन आई थ्री ए एल या टी आई सो दिस वन एंड एन आई थ्री एम दीज टू काइंड इंटरमेटली कंपाउंड फॉर्म्स एंड रिजल्टिंग इन द प्रेसिपिटेशन हार्डनिंग विच लीड्स टू द प्रेसिपिटेशन हार्डनिंग सो वेरी हाई इल स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ अराउंड एटीन हंड्रेड एम पी ए इज फाउंड In combination with an excellent structure toughness, also this is yield strength, and plus this structure toughness that is noted by KIC is equal to value of around one twenty. Okay, so the full weldability is another advantage. So this is the best structure toughness and very good yield strength, and this. Uh, Weldability also. Okay, so weldability is another advantage. So due to the softness of Martian sites, so by virtue of their high cost, merging steels are used mainly in special applications. That is, suppose like that rocket casting we use. In this case, we can use and other aerospace application. Okay. so this is about the merging steel okay so for uh, today in this video only up to here okay so we covered the merging steel facts and the fact about the formed steel and we see the basic properties about the low alloy steels hsla and high strength structural steels okay so thank you and stay connected and like share subscribe our youtube channel thank you